कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटों का रेडियो फीजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फीजी टू देश की In the news tonight, an historic day as COVID-19 vaccinations begin. So Delpa continues to probe its own. And housing projects gain momentum. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nani. Kulabinaka Fiji, the National COVID-19 Vaccination Program started this morning marking an historic day in combating the pandemic and returning to normalcy. Ten frontline workers were the first to get the AstraZeneca jabs to ensure they are protected in continuous efforts to keep Fiji COVID-19 contained. Details with Filipe Naikaso. It was a proud moment for these frontline workers to be the first to receive the Oxford vaccine. We've um, started last week in advocating and also talking about uh, the benefits that this vaccination will bring. It's not only to our health, but also to our very own airport here in Nandi. We'd like to see those planes fly again and we'd like to see people coming in and out of the airport and we'd like to get our lives back. For Naira Mohammed, being part of the first 10 to get the jab was a privilege. It feels nothing more than a normal you know injection and there is no sense of dizziness or to be honest even my arm is not painful as well so it was just a little pinch like any other injection for me the 10 recipients had to be registered before getting vaccinated today we uh, in the hotel industry being the front line of receiving visitors and, and uh, looking after them I think uh, this uh, achievement today will give us a lot of hope. It was also an emotional moment for the Minister for Health who says the fight against COVID-19 is a personal one for many of us. Yeah, it's an amazing day. Amazing in the sense that um, this is the beginning of the end. It's not the end, but the beginning of the end. The Ministry of Health is registering frontline workers online in order to receive the vaccine. Philip and Aikaso, FBC News. And Minister for Health Dr. Ifire Miwangai Nambete says today marks the beginning of the end for the pandemic as COVID-19 vaccinations have started for frontline workers. Dr. Wangai Nambete stresses that these are the layers of COVID-19 containment they've been working towards. However, the ball must not be dropped. Philip and Aikaso again. Not mincing his words, the Minister for Health says it was critical the AstraZeneca jabs were given first to these frontline workers, toiling behind the scenes to keep Fiji safe. But today is all about you, all about you on the front line. Just thanking you and appreciating you. And also today is about making sure that you are protected. And as a government, we want to make it very clear to you that your lives are very important to us because uh, this is. This is important. The Ministry of Health will also be monitoring those who have received the vaccination as it will be recorded in the online portal. It is important that we mention that there is a possibility when you receive the vaccine, you might have you know, short-lived symptoms like pain at the injection site or you might have a little bit of discomfort. Sometimes all that is normal with vaccination. Fiji's efforts in ensuring COVID-19 containment and now administrating the jabs have been highly praised. The vaccine is extremely important, but it's not a silver bullet by itself. Public health needs to be front and center. For the people, the development partners say the vaccines are here today because of the global support in fighting the pandemic. Philip and I, Kaso, FBC News. And Felipe Naikaso is live from Nandi now. Felipe, what happens next? Well, Edwin, today it's a uh, huge step for Fiji in its road to recovery from the pandemic. Now, the focus is to get the 12,000 doses uh, to the uh, frontline workers. Uh, this is about 6,000 of them uh, as the campaign begins from today. Now, the second jab is also expected to be given in the next few months. And uh, Edwin, this is why it's important for Fijians to register themselves once they get the first jab. So in order 
order for the uh, Ministry of Health to be able to locate them quickly and to tell them when they're able to get the second jab. Uh, the Ministry of Health is also reminding Fijians to continue applying pre-advised measures to successfully prevent and control COVID-19 transmission despite the rollout of the vaccination program for today. Uh, this includes uh, the social distancing, uh, the proper managing of ventilation and also maintaining good hygiene. Naka Felipe. Social Democratic Liberal Party leader William Ngavoka has confirmed investigations will continue against members who are allegedly involved with Sitiveni Rambuka and his proposed political party. This comes as Sodelpa MP Andiliti and Yoni Baravi claims that Rambuka has apologized for sending her an email in the first place. Apanisa Wangai Randovu reports the email alleges that Andi Litia and others are gathering signatures for the former party leader's proposed party. The Sadalpa leader says the fact cannot be denied that names of people allegedly involved with former opposition leader Sitiveni Rambuka have surfaced. The email has come out and uh, we know that the, the originator of the email, so what are you saying, was it a mistake? Or? He had used the email addresses that he normally uses to Sadalpa supporters, but in his rush he forgot to delete names that were not supposed to be there. So my name was one of the names in that email. Gavoka says an apology from Rambuka alone cannot stop the investigation, as it is dangerous to have people secretly involved with another party in Sodelpa's midst. There is a credibility issue here. We cannot ignore the fact that their names they have been mentioned as people who were tasked to lead, uh, to lead initiatives to form the party. Andelitia claims she has received an apology from Rambuka for the mess that's been created by his email. I can confirm that I received an apology from the gentleman who purportedly wrote that email. He has explained the mistake that he did and I've accepted his apology. Eight Sodelpa board members are currently under investigation and will not be involved in any party affairs until findings are available. Gavoka says they cannot let things go unchecked, especially as they prepare for the next general election. Apinisa Ongarandovu, FBC News. And Apinisa is live now. Apinisa, interesting to note Andi Litia confirming that there was an email from Rambuka and that she was in fact listed in it. Edwin, it's the first confirmation that Andi Litia was copied in the email from Rambuka. Well, she does go on to clarify that uh, her inclusion in the email was an oversight. It is also confirmation that uh, the former party leader is lobbying for party supporters. Uh, is, if, if that is indeed the case, it uh, casts shadows over every other individual listed, whether on purpose or by mistake. It also explains why the Sodalpa management is taking such drastic actions. And the Litia stand remains. There is no evidence of collusion with Rombuka and Ratu Epenisa has no power to ban to ban them from the management board. Edwin. Naka Penisa. Bad weather has negatively impacted projects for Housing Authority. Chief Executive Robert Sain says contractors have to look at alternatives to conduct civil work due to continuous heavy rain. Sain has highlighted that the authority will soon begin work on some projects around the country. Kritika Kumar reports. The Housing Authority is working with other service providers to merge development plans and incorporate related processes. Water cabling and uh, energy Fiji cabling and all those things. So a lot of digging will be required in, and preparing the drains and all those things. So uh, if there is a rain or uh, the weather is not favorable um, and the uh, ground conditions are wet, the, the, this work will not be able to happen. The chief executive says some of their projects are still on paper. Currently we, uh, we are at the planning stage uh, for one of our projects in Vekomba. Uh, we are uh, in the scheme plan design uh, that is uh, close to 119 acres and that's um, with which will be able to allocate close to 400, uh, 640 lots. Housing Minister Premila Kumar says upon completion, successful applicants will be issued 99-year leases. It simply means there is a proper road, proper drainage, footpath, electricity, water, sewage. And these are the various aspects of any subdivision. 
under the Subdivision Act. Tovata Subdivision in Lambasa has a contractor, but the authority is waiting for some paperwork to be cleared from various agencies before they can start work. The housing development will have close to 109 lots. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Up ahead, creating opportunities for the disabled. And climate change threatens historic sites. I Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dharka. Welcome back. 54 companies and individuals internationally have provided over 10,000 donations to assist provinces ravaged by tropical cyclone Yasa. Speaking during the Radio Fiji 1's Nanonda Prime Minister program, Prime Minister Vorengi Mbani Marama says these donors applied via a newly introduced online portal. Sainia Nimboila reports. With the increasing number of donations for the nine provinces, the government has introduced the new who, when and where system to ensure everyone affected receives assistance. The Form 3W matrix will help donators to clarify the items they will be sending to Fiji, the places where they wish to donate the items and when they will distribute the donations. This will help the government know who hasn't received any relief assistance. Over 20,000 families were assessed post TC Yasa, and more than 100 non government agencies have come on board to support Fijians in need. At the moment, about 100 local individuals and local companies have also filled the NDMO forms to help those affected. Another initiative is the Loloma package that allows FRCS and the Fiji Airways to bring home certain donations from Australia, New Zealand, and Los Angeles. Baini Marama says the 3W format came in handy during tropical cyclone Anna, which caused massive flooding around the country. This was the same we used in tropical cyclone Anna. Considering the massive floodings brought about by TC Anna, we had to work hard to get to places that really needs us. Tropical cyclone Yasa affected 139,000 individuals and 31,000 houses. It destroyed 2,000 houses around the country. Total cost of damage stands at around $500 million. Sainiani Boila, FBC News. Hygiene standards in some restaurants are under the spotlight with claims that they continue to breach the Food Safety Act. The Consumer Council recently surveyed 51 restaurants and found some are failing to maintain proper hygiene and safety standards. Pranita Prakash reports. This is the condition of some of the kitchens surveyed. Greasy, grimy and nowhere near standards. There still remains a lot of restaurants to be graded. And uh, they have been, uh, you know, there are some restaurants who fail to adhere to the rules and regulations of Food Safety Act 2003. Mm -hmm. Some of, uh, you know, what we have seen is that uh, they fail to, uh, you know, make sure that the hygiene conditions are maintained in the restaurants and they're infested with pests. We must also understand that we must abide the law so that we can keep people safe. Others fail to employ good hygiene practices while storing and handling food in restaurants and the consumer watchdog continues to receive complaints. And we have also received complaints where people, you know, come to us saying that they were sold bad food or stale food. And, you know, the, the cost of uh, um, a meal is not cheap. So they need to get the best. So the restaurant owners should make sure that whatever they are selling is up to the standard and the quality. Restaurants are bound by the Food Safety Act 2003. Anyone who fails to ensure that good hygiene practices are followed is liable to pay a fine of $2,000 or 12 months imprisonment or both upon conviction. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. More effort is needed to protect and maintain the Tavuni Hill Fort, a prominent heritage site in Singatoka. Attendant Naomi Taufa says part of the historic fortress or hillside are eroding due to frequent rain. Details with Josayana Nunga. Overlooking the Singatoka River, surrounded by green valleys, there is little evidence of what used to be a chiefly mure, stone walls and house mounds occupied by Tongan settlers in the late 1800s. Today, Tavuni Hill Fort is among the most visited sites for tourists, and preserving its authenticity is paramount. 
it happens uh, naturally because uh, we can uh, stop that. Since uh, our other way we are looking for now is to um, um, get, get uh, some more rocks from other places from here. Business has been down for a year due to the pandemic. However, a group of American students visited the site earlier this week, signaling that tourism is slowly bouncing back. Today was also the first day we having, we've been receiving again our uh, a guest uh, who came all the way from America. Travel Well Fiji program manager Lamban Dingitaki says it's vital to preserve this historic site. The, the history, uh, the definition behind it, uh, they were very uh, amazed of how we are still intact with our culture and our tradition. So for them coming from a bigger country, you know, they, they were um, they're very happy and like the eye opening that we still have a tradition and culture intact with us. Taufa says it's rewarding that operations continue under the Love Our Locals campaign that attracted a good number of locals to the site. Chosely Nanunga, FBC News. People with disabilities, especially women, are at much higher risk of violence, stigma and discrimination. The Spinal Injury Association says these challenges prevent many of those with disabilities from pursuing further studies, getting into the workforce or taking part in social activities. Kelly Vadala reports. Discriminatory attitudes are a huge barrier to the full inclusion of women with disabilities in efforts to build a functioning society. I still see that the they still um, lack in, uh, in knowledge on what we do. Uh, they still need to be a sensitization on uh, issues about persons with disabilities. Uh, women in particular, they still feel uh, that they face discrimination, uh, violence. Mary Roden says more people with disabilities are capable of being part of the workforce and contributing to nation building. There's still a bit of um, a distancing in what we do with uh, com compared to the, uh, the able or yeah that's what, that's, uh, what I see and they will, there's a need for coming together and I, I think that's that's lacking in some areas the Fiji Higher Education Commission says those in the disabled community deserve equal opportunities as the regulator would like to encourage more higher education institutions to to create these spaces for, for people with disabilities to access, um, access high education um, in supporting, uh, in particular, young people. The Spinal Injury Association says some of these Fijians are held back from reaching their full potential due to personal challenges and the association is trying to find them jobs. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Time now for Business with Whitney. Thanks, Edwin. Coming up in business tonight, more applications for food stalls. And New Zealanders help obtain school books. Stay with us. Bula, Alam Gonoa, Lutoka, Lutalita Kanam Bula FM, Bertini Nambon Dua NSR. Bula FM, Nambon Dua NSR. The Sewer City Council has seen an increase in applications for cooked food sales. Special Administrator's Chair Isikeli Tukundundo is reminding street food vendors that they must seek approval from relevant authorities to operate at allocated places. Tukundundo says they are working with the Ministry of Health, the Fiji Roads Authority, the National Fire Authority and the Ministry of Employment to manage these vendors. He says businesses must seek approval and acquire licenses from the proper authorities to operate along public streets. This will ensure that food and drinks sold to the public are in accordance with the Food Safety Act. We now join Sunifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Good evening. The US dollar remained lower against major rivals today after pulling back from multi-month highs as a retreat in Treasury yields reduced currencies appeal. Riskier currencies including the Aussie and the Kiwi dollars held overnight gains as the pause in the retreat of the bond market in recent weeks boosted investor sentiment and also lifted stocks. The Aussie was mostly flat at 77 cents after jumping 1% overnight, while New Zealand's Kiwi slipped 0.1% following yesterday's 0.8% increase. 
Meanwhile, the euro was lower and looked set to snap its four-day losing streak against the greenback, shrugging off weaker eurozone fourth-quarter growth ahead of the European Central Bank meeting expected later this week. That's all for now from HFC Bank. Here the local exchange rates are set early this morning. Our dollar was pegged high against the U.S. greenback, Chinese yuan, euro and the Japanese yen. However, as usual, when it rises against the greenback, the Sangamoli declined against the currencies of our two main trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars, as well as the PNG Kina. Looking at commodities, oil prices dropped a few dollars, closing at $63 per barrel. Gold rose to close at $1,710 per ounce. And silver was up, closing at $25.89 an ounce. About 106,000 textbooks covering a range of subjects have been donated to the Education Ministry by the Fiji Association in Auckland, New Zealand. Receiving the books valued at $119,000, Minister for Education Rosie Akbar said the donation will allow children to expand their knowledge and spend their time in constructive ways. The Fiji Association in Auckland was founded in 1977 and has donated large number of books to schools over the years. While we all live in an age where internet and smartphones have taken up most of our time, I would still like to encourage everyone in our schools, in particularly our students, to re rediscover the pleasure of reading or making good use of not only these books, but the books that are present in the school libraries as well. And that's it from Business Tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Vinaka, and good evening. Ahead in sports, Women's Rugby World Cup postponed. Hi, I'm Ini from Raki Raki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The Fijiana 15s will have to wait a little longer to make their Rugby World Cup debut. World Rugby officially announcing today that the 2021 Rugby World Cup scheduled for this year has been postponed to 2022 in New Zealand. The decision to postpone this year's tournament was taken following extensive discussions with New Zealand Rugby, the New Zealand government and participating unions as a result of the continued impact and insurmountable uncertainties of the COVID-19 pandemic. Sort of was expected. Eh? Uh, COVID-19 uh, continues to change the environment globally, and uh, with uh, restrictions in terms of uh, border control and um, other issues, uh, you know, in terms of uh, entering to New Zealand, uh, I think it was uh, such was uh, expected. Eh? There's good news for rugby league fans. The Fijian Broadcasting Corporation will air some NRL matches live on the FPC Sports Channel. So finally we'd like to tell all our viewers that yes, we've managed to secure the rights. It took uh, weeks long of negotiations. This was a difficult one because uh, obviously because of COVID, uh, we had to relook at all the, all the licensing fees and, and we had to negotiate very hard to bring the fees down uh, so that we can make it available for our viewers. So, uh, yeah, it, it is indeed a great news uh, for our viewers. Playing in the Fiji Secondary Schools Rugby League competition is an eye-opener for the Ratu Latianara College under-19 side. While some might regard being in the same pool as schools rugby league giants Ratu Kandabu Levu as a setback, the Serua Base School looks at it as a blessing in disguise. Akula Dama has more. Rubbing shoulders with one of the best teams in Fiji school sports history is more than enough for Ratula Tienara. We hope to do well in our remaining games. If God willing, then we may meet Ratukandavalevu school again in the final. RKS thrashed the side 44 points to 14 last weekend. They may have a long way to go, but seeing their progress so far is quite encouraging for their coach. They have to trust themselves and they have to do the job uh, inside the play, uh, on the playground. We have heard about the success of RKS in sports, especially in Deans and Rugby League. We are thankful and blessed to have played them. 
Ratu Letienera will take on Ratu Sukuna Memorial School in round three of the Southeast Zone competition on Saturday at Maslin Primary School ground in Watuanga. Aquila Vama, FBC Sports. The much-anticipated Triple N Zone begins tomorrow at ANZ Stadium, Suva. Nineteen schools will compete in the two-day event with Andy Dakambao School going in as the reigning girls' champion and Lelin Memorial School as the current holders of the boys' title. Tali Terukula has more. Making the final arrangements, organizers are setting up for what they say will be a different Triple N Zone. It's been a long Students will be part of the games and they've come out of uh, that uh, long uh, uh, lockdown. This year is unlike any in the past with new requirements incorporated into the meet. We will run the 1500 meters uh, in the girls event for all grades. Uh, in previous years this used to be an open girls event. But uh, beginning this year uh, we'll run the 1500 meters uh, in the senior girls beginning from the uh, sub junior girls right up to the uh, senior in the COVID-19 protocol, there will be thermal jams and also the temperature of the students. Tickets have begun selling from today, with ACS already buying more than 600 so far. It's limited uh, to 5,000. 2,000 uh, for grandstand tickets and uh, 3,000 uh, at the embankment. They're already buying um, a little over 600 and, they, and they're requesting to buy some more for for tomorrow. So more than a quarter of the uh, seats for the grandstand is already, is already sold out. But Athletes have been eagerly awaiting to compete in the track and field events in one of the biggest secondary school athletic zone. It starts at the ANZ Stadium tomorrow at 3 p.m. with the 3,000 meters. The winner takes the lead on the medal tally heading into the second day on Friday. Talima Terukula, FBC Sports. Kalambu Secondary School, William Cross College and Jeremiah College held a combined interhouse at the ANZ Stadium in Suba today. Merging the interhouse events not only helped the schools save some money, but also allowed the athletes added competition ahead of the Suba Zone 1 and Coca-Cola Games. We have combined with uh, Kalambu Secondary and, uh, and William Cross just to share the cost at the stadium. And uh, the children uh, have gained a lot. It's a good experience for them. Most of them spent a lot of time in their training at home, uh, did a lot of uh, sacrifices for themselves, and it's all paying off for them, as you can see here. We're hoping to fill about 40 to 45 athletes, uh, ranging from the field and the track events as well. Expect exciting action at the South Pacific Boxing Promotions as Fiji's top boxers will feature in the first event of the year. Light heavyweight champion Sabanathan Aliva will be fighting Fiji cruiserweight champion Alifereti Kauyatha in the main bout on March 20th. Also adding to the hype is uh, the Fijian Broadcasting Corporation's decision to broadcast certain fights live. Vinina Rakatonga reports. Joseph Kwajo's sudden exit from the main bout is not a problem as promoters are bringing in light heavyweight champion Sabanathan Aliva. The main big one is Avenatha Naliva, who will be fighting Ali Freti Koyada. They are two big champions. As the public has witnessed earlier, Sorakamba village was empty when he fought Kwajo. So we can expect some big bumper crowd uh, come March 28th. FBC marketing manager Vijayan Kumar says this is a proud moment for the company, being given the opportunity to show the first boxing promotion event of the year. So basically there's a chance of uh, coming in, uh, taking advantage of the 12 uh, bouts that will be live uh, at the event and then delayed on FBC Sports. 12 bouts will be shown live on FBC Pop Channel on the Walesi platform. Locals can pay 30 Fijian dollars and international viewers can pay 20 US dollars to view this competition. Venina Rakautonga, FBC Sports. Discipline and finishing are the two main areas of concern for the Lambasa football side heading into round two of the Digicel Premier League. Interim coach Ravnil Pratap says these are the aspects they need to work on before taking on Navu on Saturday. He adds the opening clash against Mba has pushed them to relook at a few aspects of the game and to map a better plan against the Southerners. It's part of the game. Uh, I think uh, uh, players, sometimes they get carried away in the game, but uh, then... We have to go back and then uh, improve. I think uh, as individuals we need to improve. But it's part and parcel of the game. Uh, we have to be always prepared for those circumstances. 
Roy Krishna's ATK Mohan Bagan has uh, beaten Northeast United FC 2-1 in the second semi-final of the Indian Super League at the Fatora Stadium today. With this win, the Mariners have set up a mouth-watering blockbuster title clash against rivals and League Shield winners, Mumbai City FC, in the final. Now the play of the day, a look at the first uh, successful captain's referral of 2021 in Rugby Union. Highlanders halfback Aaron Smith provided the first big captain's referral, which is a new raw this year, after the Chiefs scored an apparent try. That's it from Sports Tonight in uh, New Media. GameStop shares continue to climb. This and more after the break. Today FM, today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Welcome back. In new media, shares of GameStop, the company that shocked Wall Street a few weeks back, have jumped for the fifth day running as the video game retailer announced their e-commerce strategy. It was a fine day for most of Fiji with only a few scattered showers along the eastern shores and in the interior of the larger islands. In the west, it was a fine day with clear skies and lots of sunshine. Eastwards, from Pacific Harbour to Suva, after some overnight and early morning showers, the day turned sunny and warmer. And up north, another clear day. At sea, winds are from the southeast at 15 to 20 knots, generating moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, low tide tonight is at 11.02 p.m., followed by high tide at 5.18 tomorrow morning. Sunrise is at 6.07. For tomorrow, we should see generally clear skies with a chance of morning or evening showers. On Friday, we can expect some clouds and showers with a chance of isolated thunderstorms in most areas. And in Fiji and Pulse tonight, we ask, are you excited that Fiji has started COVID-19 vaccinations? Yes, I'm really excited because it means a lot for us. I'm really happy because it means things will start to change, especially that we have relatives who are also frontline workers. Yeah, we was happy uh, when we seen the news. Our family was very happy. And you see the thing, all the was ready to give in. I think uh, today or tomorrow, sometimes like that. We was happy. I'm a farmer and I'm excited because it means we can trade freely because our frontline workers are safe and they can manage our country. And recapping our main stories, an historic day as COVID-19 vaccinations begin, Sadelpa continues to probe its own and housing projects gain momentum. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to our poll question. This week we are asking, should more awareness be created on gender equality in Fiji? Visit our FBC News website to answer. And on to our shot of the day, the sunrise captured beautifully at Nausori International Airport by Salata Karakarawa. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos by email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Modemanda. and I'm from Motoka and I love Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.